Pronoun antecedent and pronoun reference. Learning objectives. Explain what an antecedent is. Revise to correct unambiguous pronoun reference. Revise to correct number agreement between pronoun and antecedent. And revise for gender neutral usage. Pronouns. Pronouns are words that replace nouns and phrases. And nouns are people, places, or things. We use pronouns so that we don't have to repeat nouns. For example, hurricanes are large tropical storms. They commonly form in the Caribbean. Here, they replaces hurricanes. Everyone is familiar with the normal pronouns. I, she, me, it, they, we, but there are a lot more. There's indefinite pronouns, and sometimes those are singular, and sometimes those are plural, and that's where we get into a lot of trouble. The singular indefinite pronoun. When you use a singular indefinite antecedent, also use a singular pronoun to refer to it. For example, nobody remembered to bring his or her raincoat. Nobody is singular, so you use his or her to refer back to it. On the right is a list of several singular pronouns. Another, anybody, anyone, anything, each, everybody, everyone, everything, nobody, no one, nothing, one, other, somebody, someone, and something. When you use a plural indefinite antecedent, also use a plural pronoun to refer to it. For example, hurricanes and tornadoes arrive each year and both have their own destructive power. Both is plural, because it's referring back to hurricanes and tornadoes, so you would use their. Other plural pronouns include few, many, others, and several. Just to complicate things, some indefinite pronouns can be either singular or plural depending on the noun to which they refer. For example, many meteorologists spoke at the conference. All gave important information about their research. All here refers to meteorologists, so therefore it's plural, which means you need the possessive plural or the possessive pronoun there to refer back to the research. So some of these plural or singular pronouns are all, any, half, or any other fraction, none, more, most, and some. When you write, you have to avoid sexist language. Terms like anybody, somebody, nobody, and each are singular antecedents, so the pronouns that follow must be singular. At one time, it was acceptable to use he as a general term, meaning all people, but today we don't do that. We refer to it as he or she. So here's an example of a sexist sentence. Everyone should stay inside his house during a tornado. The solution, everyone should stay inside his or her house during a tornado. But that can sometimes feel kind of wordy and be a little bit awkward for students. A better solution is to make the whole thing plural. People should stay inside their houses during a tornado. There is an exception to this rule, though. If you know you are referring to something that is only masculine or only feminine, then you would use his or her, respectively. For example, in the men's prison, everyone has his own cell. It makes sense that his would be used here because women are not housed in men's prisons. Vague pronouns. Each pronoun needs an unambiguous antecedent. For example, this is ambiguous. The agent talked with the actor after he heard about the new part. The problem here is he. We don't know what its antecedent is. It could be the actor or it could be the agent. So the sentence is not clear. Revised. The agent talked with the actor after the actor had heard about the new part. So we have to repeat the actor, but the way the sentence is worded, there's no other way to know who had heard about the new part. Number agreement. A pronoun must agree in number with its antecedent. Faulty. Chapter books may be a good choice for a child who has a shorter attention span since they can take a break after a relatively short time. They should be singular because it should refer back to a child, but it doesn't. Because it's plural, it refers back to the chapter books. So what you need to do is change it to the child. For example, Chapter books may be a good choice for a child who has a shorter attention span, since the child can take a break after a relatively short time. Pronoun case. When a pronoun is the subject of a sentence, use a subjective form. The subjective form is I, he, she, we, they. A pronoun is the object in the sentence. Use the objective form of the pronoun. Me, him, her, whom, whomever. If you are not sure about subjective case and objective case, or if you need a little bit more explanation, pause the video and do an internet search for subjective and objective case to get a better understanding out of it. 
because from here on, that's going to make a big difference. The possessive case. Possessive pronouns show ownership. Possessive adjectives come before the noun that they modify. For example, she finished her research on the polar ice caps, but we did not finish our research. Possessive pronouns replace the possessive adjective and the noun that follows it. She finished her research on the polar ice caps, but we did not finish ours. Ours here is in place of our research from above. Problems with possessive pronouns. Some possessive adjectives sound like certain contractions, so you have to be very careful that you know when to use the various forms of their, your, and its. When you're trying to come up with a possessive case, make sure you're not accidentally writing a contraction. For example, their, as in they are, your, as in you are, and its, as in it is. Pronouns in comparison with than or as. Avoid making errors in pronoun case when the pronoun follows than or as. If the pronoun is the subject, use the subjective case. If it's the object, use the objective case. If you use the incorrect case, your sentence may have a meaning that you did not intend it to have. For example, the objective case. I like rainy days as much as him. This means I like rainy days as much as I like him. But what you're probably trying to say is I like rainy days as much as he or he does. And this means I like rainy days as much as he likes rainy days. Pronouns in the prepositional phrases. In a prepositional phrase, the words that follow the preposition are the objects of the preposition, so you know you'll use the objective case. For example, to him, global warming is not a big deal. Between you and me, I think he's misinformed. So to and between are your prepositions, so the, the objective case follows them. Pronouns with and or or. Use the correct case when nouns and pronouns are joined by and or or. If the pronouns are the subject, use a subjective case. If the pronouns are the object, use the objective case. For example, she and I had to research about the causes of desertification, and then the instructor asked her and me to summarize the information. As a side note, never mix the pronoun case. For example, it's never acceptable to say her and I. So when do you use who or whom? Who is the subjective case and whom is the objective case? So the easy way to figure it out is to replace the objective pronoun with him or her, you would use whom. If you're going to replace it with he or she, you would use who. So for example, I know a man who studies icebergs. He studies icebergs is correct. So you know that in this case, who is correct. Now the objective case. The man to whom you gave your resume is my boss. You gave your resume to him. 